In one of Istanbul's poorest quarters, graffiti of the banned revolutionary movement. In this home, a shrine to political martyrdom. It's a house of death. After 156 days on hunger strike, Zehra Kulaksis, 22, is fading. I believe that we will win. That is why I will fast until the end. But I don't know if I'll be alive. Maybe, maybe not. She's comforted by her father. Her uncle is on hunger strike in prison. The empty bed belongs to Zehra's 19-year-old sister. Her hunger strike ended in death last week. That funeral brought out revolutionaries whose movement admits responsibility for assassinations and terrorism. Over 700 of their comrades are on hunger strike in jail. So far, 14 prisoners have died and four relatives outside. This crisis is over prison reform, vital if Turkish to join the European Union. Last year, Turkish security forces targeted jails where communist inmates had imposed their own discipline and amass weapons. 30 died. The strategy was to move the militants into these new isolation jails to destroy their defiance. The hunger strikes their response. Turkey's former hardline justice minister, who designed the new isolation jails, says the present government lacks grip. I'm sorry about these hunger strike deaths, but there's another side to this tragedy. Terrorist groups are ordering their followers to sacrifice themselves in an attempt to regain control inside our prisons. At Turkada isolation jail, relatives line up to visit hunger strikers. It's a confrontation fueled by a lethal stubbornness on all sides. Horrific, harrowing, such words don't do justice to this gut-wrenching crisis. The tempo of death is rising, so is criticism of the government. Scores of would-be martyrs are in the terminal stages of life. Bran Baron, BBC News, outside Terkida Prison, Turkey.